So, it's true. The king is dead. We find ourselves in a place we never sought. The threat of anarchy swells beneath us. Done begging for scraps. We take what we need. Sharif. No rest for the wicked. Uh, brand new RPG sensation. It looks beautiful. Um, I haven't played it myself, but you've been playing it quite a lot. And my main question is, um, having been sucked into a previous uh, early access sensation in the form of Baldur's Gate 3, I kind of wish that I hadn't, because by the time Baldur's Gate 3 actually came out, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I was a bit bored of the opening chapters by that point. Mm. So um, my question is, uh, is it worth going early access for this one or should I just hold on? Oh, this is an interesting question because <laughs> I, I actually was thinking about Baldur, Baldur's Gate 3 recently. Because yeah. uh, to, to make a long story short, yeah, yes, Baldur's Gate 3 was worth playing in early access for sure. But if you play it now or if you play it last year when it came out, everyone will tell you like, it is a significantly better game. Uh, so you, mm. you're trading a, I don't know, an excellent game for a really good game, I guess, mm. by waiting. Uh, and I feel like it's a similar situation. I think the, yeah, the, the BG3 uh, comparison is on point. Uh, so No Risk for the Wicked is a new game from Moon Studios, who are the makers of the Ori games, Blind Forest and Will of the Wisps. It is quite unlike those games in that it's not a platformer, uh, and it's not a very emotional yeah. game in the way that those games were. Uh, mm. It is a... I want to call it... I, I'm trying to be careful with uh, phrasing, but it is one of the most interesting genre medleys uh, mm. that I have ever seen. Uh, okay. It is... Basically, it's... It, one of my favorite things in games is when when developers dip their toes into different uh, ponds and then kind of try to see like, okay, this is interesting. We're going to catch something from here and then walk away and like go into some somewhere else and then catch something and then try to implement it into the game. And this game has a bunch of these elements. So it looks like a Diablo game. It has an isometric, you know, top-down camera, fixed camera perspective. You can't control the camera. Yeah. Uh, so you look at it, it's like, oh, is this like kind of like Diablo? No. And then you <laughs> play it and then it's like, oh, is this kind of like Souls? Because it has stamina-based combat, sword and board, very deliberate animation, uh, animations, uh, heavy emphasis on animation priority and, and really uh, tough, challenging combat where you could die in two hits. So you're saying, you, th you think like, okay, I know what this is. This is a Souls-like, right? You know, I roll and I dodge and I've played one of those before. Yeah. But it's not really because there are no bonfires. Enemies don't really come back like if you feel an area you clean an area there are other rules that dictate why enemies come back so it's not quite uh, the same as that and then there are other rules associated with that as well that your weapon durability degrades after dying and so you you take a step back and it's like okay what kind of game is it is it a survival game and the answer is no even though you have an axe that you chop down trees with and you have a shovel that you dig <laughs> holes with to get some uh, some clay or some uh, like mine an ore vein for some uh, some s couple of different ores yeah which you use to make uh healing potions as you would in a survival game as you would in, in a valheim or or, or or in any one of those games but it's not a survival game even though you can go back <laughs> home and then build a chest to store the stuff that you've crafted which you can use later so this is what i mean it's a milli of all those things. And it's going for this kind of very directed experience where there's a certain flow that they want you to have, which is you go to the town, you talk to people, you pick up some quests, you sort yeah. out the stuff that you crafted, you look at your gear, you're like, oh, I don't want this. Well, this is broken. I'm not going to repair it. I'm just going to sell it. Well, I'm going to salvage this because it has an item that I want. It has like rune that, that I want on my weighing weapon. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, when I go back out yeah. and then you're met with this 
roguelike elements or roguelite, I suppose, element, which is like, are you are you keeping keeping score? His like six <laughs> elements. This is a roguelite as well. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> what the hell you is know, this? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, 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 in the sense that like some enemies will come back, or enemies will change behaviors after an area. Like they have this clever mechanic, which is like a reverse fog of war. Mm. Or in any in a Metroidvania or any most games you play, when you the more of the map that you explore. You clear the fog of war and then that's it. Like you've visited everything. But mm. in this game, it's the reverse because you 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 clear the fog of war in an area and then you leave it and go back to your hometown to do some stuff. And then the fog almost encroaches back onto it. And when that happens, those enemies return. Maybe they have a there's like, oh, there's a new uh bandit leader who has a squad of men who took shelter in this cave that you visited like two hours ago. It mm-hmm. just had monsters in it, it's, and it was fine, and you just mined your ore, and you left. But now it's guarded by these people who throw fireballs, and, and then there's like an annoying enemy with a big hammer who has impossible reach, who just sees you before you see them. And, and it's like, and this is the, like how it keeps it interesting. So mm-hmm. in, in the sort of way like a roguelike where you're like, you don't know what it is, it's the same kind of tile set, but you don't know what you're going to run, run into. So it is a fascinating... Uh, uh, concoction of all these different mechanics yeah yeah uh, that i find really interesting even though it is early but i think they have you know to to go back to the original uh opening question they put the best uh polish that they have or the best work that they have on the elements that matter most which is the combat the visual style the moment to moment Mm. a lot of stuff around that is very early but if you're if you want to pick it up today to say Oh, uh, I want some fun combat. I want some interesting visual, like a almost like an oily painting style. Yeah, it is beautiful. Like really, yeah. you know, incredible HDR uh, pop. Mm-hmm. Really amazing uh, uh, sound with heft to the combat and a really thump to the animate to to to, to, the, to the attack animations and everything uh, around the moment to moment. You're gonna have a bad time, a great time, excuse me. But if you're thinking about it in the sense of like, oh, every probably every hour you're going to run into something like, why is this? Why can't I stack items on inventory? Why can't I move things? Uh, why do I have to select each item individually? Why do I have to do this? It's yeah. like, yeah, that's that's the sort of early access element of it, I suppose. Yeah, okay. So um, that's interesting. I think it sounds like such a interesting mix of styles. Um, and as yeah. you say, things cribbed from other places. And uh, uh, I think it's definitely, it definitely sounds like it's worth checking out. Um, even in an early access state, because like, I don't think there's anything quite like this that exists elsewhere. Not to that degree, no, no, no. Yeah. So I like, think uh, if you look at like the reaction to it from Steam and from Reddit, everyone is like going into it thinking it's something different, and then they feel like, oh, what, what, what the hell? I thought this was a Diablo <laughs> game. Where's the loot? And people are like, like me, for example, knowing what I knew about it, I was like, why is there a survival element? I'm not gonna chop down trees. What's going on here? <laughs> so everyone is going into it thinking it's one thing, and then they're met with these other elements around yeah. it. But I think the game does a good job of at least keeping everything in check uh, and. Uh, consistent enough with the experience that it wants to give mm. some tweaking will need to be done i still think the survival element is, is you can read my impressions on it on the website but it's it's for the most part it is fascinating how successful it is at yeah melding all these genres together that's amazing i actually you've actually made me think that this is worth checking out in early access and definitely <laughs> worth kind of you know playing it playing it in the state it's currently in and and, and sampling all of these kind of these interesting ideas it has, and then quite happily putting it down for a while and coming back when it's had a few quality of life updates and a bit more content and stuff like that. Yeah. It, in that sense, it sounds like, you know what? This is actually a pretty good early access investment. I might do it. I might do it, Sharif. You've convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then, yeah, uh, the the story, there's like maybe like one act of the story, which is another mm. thing that I didn't touch on, but there is, they do so much with so little in that story. Uh, like, it's almost... You know, I don't want like pit it against other games in terms of like the quality of their storytelling or the quality of what they do with their facial mm. animation. But I look at how convincing these characters are in the way that they act and in the way that their faces are animated, which this is a very stylized game. It's not like a motion capture game where every little wrinkle is going to be captured. But I look at this and I feel so much like the, the there's a lot of uh, emotional weight that comes across in the voices 
and in even the way the cameras uh, the camera moves that I don't feel from a game like you know Horizon for example where I look at it and it just looks like an an algorithm animated this and I feel nothing uh, <laughs> where I look at this and it's like just subtle changes to the eye and again very stylized so not not don't expect you know Last of Us quality and yet it's moving me more than those games uh, which is mm. an element that I didn't expect getting into it especially a lot of those games when they get into early access it's like you see a, 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 some text on screen and it's like coming soon we haven't finished the animations yet uh, which this is what I was talking about earlier they really focused on giving you like front loading a lot of the really mm. polished stuff where yeah. you get into it's like I can't believe this is early access and then you spend five hours it's like oh okay I see why this is early access <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like they're they're leveraging their uh, what they're good at as a studio, um, and uh, and figuring the rest out as they go, which uh, sure. which is great. Uh, that sounds great. And uh, how much is it on early access? How much is it on Steam? Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, yes, for the to use dollars, it's thirty six. Yeah, uh, which is thirty one fifty pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, sorry, it's a, a bunch of <laughs> steam pricing is different for for every country. So yeah, I wanna, yeah. Uh, it's much so, cheaper. So in the UK, that. it's a it's it's a touch over thirty quid. It's it's around thirty dollars. Yeah, but I, keep in mind, you know, there's a ten yeah. percent discount. But yes. Yeah, more or less. I think it's you know it's a uh, hmm, it's a uh, it's it's a, it's it's a steep ask for early access, but mm-hmm. I think from what from the sounds of it, it sounds like it's actually worth it. Um. And I think it's gorgeous. I, I've said it a couple of times, but I think that the art style of this is really striking um, in the first instance. It's, it's got an almost hand-drawn quality to it, which I really enjoy. And uh, yeah, so you've convinced me, Sharif, and I don't. I know I don't have time to play it, which is annoying. Um, so that's your fault. It's a punishment upon those who have lost their faith. God's chosen ascent high. History will remember how we answer. No matter the cost.